What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. Happy Monday, February 28th, the last day of February. So what does that mean? That means the monthly close is coming tonight. I can't wait. I'm ready to see the charts. I want to know the ups, the downs, the possibilities, where this thing is about to go. We are living in crazy times right now. We are living in a crazy world, especially with everything going on over in Russia and Ukraine and all the talks about SWIFT and it becoming a household name all of a sudden and the sanctions that are coming down. Crazy times, folks. Crazy, crazy times. But listen, in this video, we're going to discuss Russia and SWIFT. Of course we are. Why? wouldn't we we're also going to talk about and review some comments from Ashish Burla, a thread that came out last night and then we're going to talk about the ripple versus sec lawsuit because today is a day that us xrp holders have been waiting for for quite some time i'll let you know what that is stay tuned but without further ado listen make sure you give me a follow on twitter xrp news underscore we're looking to break a hundred thousand it's been a slow grind up to 100k i know we're gonna get there we're gonna go flying through it Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps me out so, so much. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So, with that, with saying that, let's head over to Live Coin Watch. What are we seeing on Live Coin Watch? Well, we're seeing red. Uh, there's no other way for me to hide this, folks. Bitcoin is down 2.67%, coming in at $38,546. I'll be loved XRP is down 3.91%, coming in at a mean lean 70 three cents now i stated before i'm going to tell you again we're going to wait for the closes tonight let's see where bitcoin closes and then let's wait for the charts to come out from you know who and we'll review them we get the ups we get the downs we get all the possibilities we sit back we really analyze and take everything in and we plan our next moves that is how we attack this i told you i've been stacking fiat for quite some time now i will continue to stack it i am not entering into any new positions i want to see the closes i want to see the charts and then i will put out and i will review live on the channel what I am going to do and my next moves. Total market cap coming in at 1.7 trillion as the Bitcoin dominance is at 41.43%. It has gone up. Very interesting to see what I tell you, 45% Bitcoin dominance goes over that. This thing is going to fly. Mark my words on that. Now we move over and we head to the daily close. What is this showing you? Well, daily close showing you in 11 hours and 48 minutes and 42 seconds that the Bitcoin close is gonna happen for not only the daily but the monthly this is the countdown if you're ever looking to know how many hours are left in the weekly the daily the hourly the monthly just go to dailyclose.com and they let you know and then i'm going to show you this because it's monday and mondays are good days on crypto twitter listen there were 25 of these out the bat there's only 10 this is episode number two diamond hands collections myself moon boys nft collections these are special and limited editions for the Solagenic platform only there is going to be in a completely entire collection a new collection something you've never seen before that's going to come out on the xrp ledger but here you go 23 seconds <sighs> I think I'm playing chess, I see a king, I'm at his neck I'm three steps ahead of every move, now that's a check Yes, they wanna know my secret, it's because I never slept All my nightmares of me at 40, life's a wreck there it is, folks. It's Diamond Tent. I will put the link in the description of this video. It's just 10. Once they're gone, this thing will never be minted again. You will own a piece of history. And now we come over here. Breaking news. The U.S. braces for cyber attacks. This is the latest news coming out. Supposedly, there's going to be some cyber attacks going down, folks. Especially talking in the bank system. Have a listen. 43 seconds. Let's do it. Just really quickly on the cyber attacks, uh, especially to the U.S., I think that we all really need to take this very seriously. We have been attacked before. We are constantly attacked. This could be at a different level. Think back to the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack. We're not talking about your grandma, grandpa emails. We're talking about rail infrastructure damage that will disrupt our way of life. And the whole point for Putin is to create panic. So don't panic. Whatever might happen, whatever might come, prepare as much as you can. Cyber experts tell me at the most vulnerable sector, if in 
infrastructure in our country right now is water and sewage. It just hasn't been updated as other industries have. So just be prepared. Be prepared, folks. That is the message they're trying to get across. Be prepared. And then my man Jack remembers, does a little throwback on us three years ago. Brad Gollinghouse stated, and I quote, there was 15 senior executives from JP Morgan and Ripple's offices this afternoon. What do you think went down in that office? Because if I remember this clearly three years ago, there was a lot of champagne being popped when those executives left. Why would there be 15 JP Morgan executives in Ripple's office? I want you to think about that for one second. And then Sam from SBF Exchange says, we would welcome a strong regulatory framework for digital assets in Europe. Christine Lagarde. But in the meantime, we are already complying with international sanctions to prevent evasion and will do so whether or not it's mandated. Man mandated. Feel free to reach out. This is talking about the European Central Bank urging crypto regs in wake of the Russian sanctions. At the end of the day, I mean, there's no, there's, there's no way to beat around the bush here. Regulations are coming. Worldwide local you name it there will be regulations now will each country have the same same set of regs of what you can do and what you can't do no absolutely not but will they all be kind of married off of each other 100 percent folks and i believe that the u.s is going to lead in regulations and all these other countries are sitting back waiting for the u.s to make their move so they can see what the u.s did and then they're just going to kind of you know take the paper change a couple of words a couple of lines and boom they have their rags and i'm going to show you this an x zombie gif look at this telling you this is the hottest nft coming to the xrp ledger you can get it on the sologenic platform Price has been pretty stable, as you can tell, over the past couple of weeks. As it floats around 350 to 400 XRP. These prices, these things are a steal. They're going to be worth thousands beyond thousands once the NFTs are released on the ledger. Mark my words. And then, how do you think you're going to be able to claim your NFTs? Check this out. This is from X Dudes. He's bring, building out a, con, a complete marketplace called Xmart. Well, you'll be able to mint your NFTs, purchase your NFTs, swap your coins for NFTs, right? This is called the collection spinner. You come over here, it's like a slot machine. You tell them how many tokens you got, you spin the wheel, and watch what happens. There you go, spinning up. Boom, congratulations, folks. You just won X Dude number 4,101. Love the concept. This is awesome. Coming to X Mart, which is going to be the number one XRP ledger NFT marketplace. Mark my words. And then the Wolf of Wall Street puts this out from Mark Yusko. He says, This should terrify you. And this is going to segue us in to the rest of the video. Here we go. This, this idea that, and now the worst part is what happened in Canada and what just happened in Ukraine today, where the government says, you know, that money that you thought was yours, yeah. it's actually ours. Yeah. And you actually can't get to it. And in fact, if, if you tried to use it for something you care about that we don't like, we're just gonna take it all. So I've said, if, you, if that didn't terrify you, I mean, like literally yeah. terrify you, you're just not paying. Listen, he's talking about them taking your money, doing what they want with your money, saying, listen, that money you got with us, hey, it's not really yours. It's ours. Back off. It's ours now. Crazy, crazy times we're in. And then Jesse Powell put this out. So for Fedorova, I'm going to destroy his name. He's the vice prime minister of Ukraine, the minister of digital transformation of Ukraine. He called out. Yesterday, he's asking, I'm asking all major crypto exchanges to block addresses of Russian users. It's crucial to, to freeze not only addresses linked to Russian and Bel Belarusian pol politicians, but also to sabotage ordinary users. Well, fortunately, since this is crypto and Jesse Powell, you know, he's had the crank and called this out because I understand the rationale for this request. But despite my deep respect for the Ukraine people, Kranken cannot freeze the accounts of our Russian clients without a legal requirement to do so. Russians should be aware that such a, a requirement could be intimate. That requirement could come from your own government, as we have seen in Canada. 
in response to protests, bank runs, and attempts to flee the country. It could come from foreign states like the U.S. as a weapon to turn over the Russian populace against its government's policies. I would guess that the vast majority of crypto holders on Kraken are anti-war Bitcoin. It is the embroiderment of libertarian values, which strongly favor individualism and human rights. In Canada, crypto is the only financial rail left for those who oppose the regime. Our mission at Crank in FX is to bridge individual humans out of the legacy financial system and bring them into the world of crypto, where arbitrary lines on maps no longer matter, where they don't have to worry about being caught in broad wealth confiscation. Sometimes the hardest thing about having power is knowing when not to use it. Our mission is better served by focusing on individual needs above those of any governments or political faction. The people money is an exit strategy for humans, a weapon for peace, not for war. Very interesting, folks. It's Listen, that's a crazy world we're living in. And she's Berla chimes in talking about he says we've seen them say that russia could potentially evade sanctions and get around swift by using crypto i outlined some of the key arguments refuting this below crypto is only becoming more easily trackable by software and governments there simply isn't enough global liquidity to support russia's needs on and off ramps are by large regulated financial institutions that have abide by the OFAC laws dividing into number two our team took a look at the data behind this. As stated by the U.S. Treasury Department, Russia conducts 50 billion in FS trans transactions a day. As the, largest, as the largest crypto, Bitcoin's volume is usually between 20 to 50 billion a day. So Russia's doing about 50 billion and Bitcoin's volume per day is about 20 to 50 billion. Russia needs, needs would encompass Bitcoin and more. As of January 2022, you could only send $200,000 worth of Russian rubles at a time through BTC on Binance, 3.7 million through BC, BTC USD pairing, and 2.9 million through the BTC Euro pair on Bitstamp. Even if you were sending 200,000 every minute and assuming the Bitcoin ruble market were, was resilient enough to immediately replenish the liquidity, you're nowhere near 50 billion a day. Also, the total average daily volume over the last month of the BTC ruble pair has just been $11 million. SWIFT is one part of the equation here. Banning some Russian banks from using SWIFT does com complicate matters, but let's not forget that Russia has ample time to prepare setting up direct banking relationships in Asia and elsewhere to get correspondence. And we have heard from Russia that they've been building out a new digital payment platform system network with China. So as you can see, Russia using Bitcoin, folks, it's not going to happen. There isn't even enough liquidity. The story ends right there, to be quite frank with you. Then my man, Lord Lionel, puts, today's the end of discovery in the XRP lawsuit. It could be over any day, any week. We know XRP isn't a security. The evidence so far has shown XRP is not a security. This is going to get very interesting and exciting for holders. So today's the last day of discovery. Why is it big? Because once discovery comes to an end, the judge can finally start making her rulings on some of the matters in this case, like the fair, notice, the fair notice defense. What we want to see today, we really, folks, we really don't want to see anything. We don't want to hear anything. If we hear something, there's a good chance that it's going to be a last minute pushback, another delay. We kind of just want this to settle down, go away. Let's hear about this in a couple of days. Therefore, we know that the discovery has officially come to an end and that the judge can stop making rulings. It will see how fast this case starts to pick up steam now that the judge can step in and start ruling on certain matters. I'm excited. We are definitely heading in the right direction. I mean, maybe it's not the right time for this thing to come to an end with the market kind of looking like it's going in a downward spiral, especially with everything going on in the world. But it is a very, very positive and strong step that an expert discovery officially comes to an end today and we can get this case moving in the right direction hopefully we get a summertime settlement or a summertime victory for ripple and xrp gets clarity and then we can properly kick off the second half of this year with an xrp utility bull run folks listen that's gonna do it for me wash your damn hands be nice and be kind to of each other ripple van winkle is out